All right, I'll get right into it. Ain't no point in explaining anything. This is what the Lord put on my heart to share. I had already shared it with one of my relatives. And um, he just got me up this morning and said, hey, this is what I need you to do, Ed. This is what I'm going to do. It's kind of scripted, though. I don't do well freestyle. I get stuck on one point for 20 minutes, and this should be short and sweet. Um, the Word of God says that all of us have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what it says right there in Romans chapter 3. And um, so we've fallen short of God's glory. This is true, but some people teach that God is only a God for those of us who are of the bloodline of Israel. And for this reason, people believe that those who are not direct descendants of Israel cannot serve God and that there is no such thing as those people sinning against God. The Holy Bible says differently though. Uh, Exodus chapter 9, verse 27. I'm going to read it from the King James Version. I usually read New King James, but I got my um, Hebrew, Hebrew Greek Keyword Static Bible. There will be certain words that people get confused and stuff. You can go and look at the back and see what the actual definition is meant to be. Exodus chapter 9, verse 27 says, And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Right here, this is uh, Pharaoh acknowledging the Lord. The Lord who everybody not supposed to be able to serve. I'm going to go down to verse 34 of the same chapter. Exodus chapter 9, verse 34 says, And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. Now right here is saying that clearly that Pharaoh sinned. But the thing is, people say that, um, hey, if you're not an Israelite, there's no such thing as sin for you. If you're, if you, you, there's no such thing as uh, my God for you, Yahweh, Jehovah, El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not your God, so you can't sin against Him. You can't repent for sin against Him. You cannot serve Him. But that's false. It's not true. Everyone who reads the book of Exodus can clearly see that Pharaoh and the Egyptians were not God's people. It says it over and over again. Yet Pharaoh confessed his sin and repented in Exodus chapter 10, verse 16 and 17. Exodus 10, verse 16 and 17 read, Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. This is Pharaoh repenting for his sin, acknowledging God, giving God the glory, saying that, hey, this is God that did it. This is God's hand. I believe. So we can't allow uh, somebody else to tell us, hey, you can't serve my God because of your ancestors or your lineage or your heritage, your bloodline or whatever. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says that, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. See, death and life are in the power of your tongue. And in other words, those who love it shall eat the fruit of their words. Because of this, we must be careful what we speak. I saw, um, I just watched the video to make sure I still had it, to make sure it wasn't deleted. I saw a black man on social media tell a 14-year-old black boy that the boy was not an Israelite, that they could not eat at the cookout together. Um... Captain Tazariak was his name. I'm not calling him out. I'm not calling out anybody. This is not a video to call out anybody to call any animosity. I just want to make sure that people are not misled or misguided or strayed down the wrong path because of a, a, a few certain, a certain, certain few things that that may seem legitimate coming from the Bible, but taken, um, taken literally, people can misinterpret the Bible very easily. 
That's why you got to study the, the entire Bible from front to back. And you have to study you have to study the history. You have to get different versions to find out what the Lord God Almighty is actually saying in his word. And the Bible is the word of God. Um, Captain Tazariak, he told the boy, um, uh, the guy with the little boy was from uh, the 14 year old boy. He was from Ghana, Africa. And he was, um, he, he told the guy, he told the boy, um, you're not my people. Um, I can't eat at the cookout with you. Your people enslaved my people. Um, no Africans, no Asians, no Caucasians, or anything other than an Israelite can come and eat with us, can come to the cookout because we're not allowed to, to, um, to mingle and hang out with people who are not Israelite. That's what he told the little boy. And um, he also said he, this guy also said um, he likes to see uh, the, the white people homeless and their babies and, and suffering and stuff like that. I mean, the thing is with that, if we, if we feel a certain way about a certain race of people or a certain group of people, is that's what we're that's that's for us to to, to deal with. That's for, for us and for me. I'm gonna say me for me and the Lord to have to to handle to take care of. But when we cause other people to fall down that same path, and it and it's something contrary to the word of God, the Lord the Lord said, if you're gonna cause just one of these of my children to stray, it'd be better for you if a millstone were tied around your neck and you were thrown into the bottom of the sea, the bottom of the river. So we don't want to be um telling people something and they don't understand it and we don't want to be telling people that's something that 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 we believe if it doesn't line up with the word of god um we know another thing we know that the egyptians were black you know the egyptians were black. we know that pharaoh and all those people were black in africa at the time they had all those certain gods who they served and this and that but the but but true enough they were still black people now here's the thing how can we know if there were any egyptians who disappointed their masters who um and end up being slaves or whatever you know that could have been an egyptian who did something wrong i don't know for toy pharaoh dropped pharaoh's wine or burnt his bread or something like that and pharaoh went and put him in there with the rest of the slaves maybe he had some israelite slaves some Egyptian slaves, some other different types of nations of other different African slaves, and, and he had them all together when they were sold into slavery and brought over here. You know, what, what if that what if their bloodline was carried all the way up until right there when they were sold? So here's the thing: if there were any Egyptians who this point they mastered them and stolen into slavery and shipped to America with the Israelites, there's no way that we can prove that. Because clearly we can see that uh, black people come in all different colors, from 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 uh, from light skin looking at albino all the way up to uh, purple great black. You know what I'm saying? What they want to say, burnt. That's what they call burnt. And here's the thing: this is why we should take heed to the word of God when it tells us ignore endless genealogy. It don't even it doesn't lead to anything. There's nothing to gain from it. It's good, okay, it's all right to, to go and find out who your people were, but you know who your people were, you know, you know who your people were, but you can't get down to the root of who the, who, who actually were your people before you came to America, as far as what slave they were, what, what slave they were, who, and, um, who they actually belonged to. You know what I'm saying? All, I'm, all of them were of the same color. And since no one knows for sure if their ancestors were Egyptian slaves, Israelite slaves, or whatever type of African slaves before they were shipped to America, it's better not to speak about who is not entitled to serve God and be in his kingdom and who he is. Because, <clears throat> like I said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And if you say anybody who's not uh, Israelite bloodline, they automatically go into hell because they cannot serve the Lord God Almighty. If that's what you're going to say, and you get in front of God, and God said, well, man, uh, this was your great, 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 great ancestor right here. And this was, uh, he was a, an Egyptian. He was Pharaoh's cousin. You know what I'm saying? What if God says that? 
It's better not to speak about. It's better not to speak on those things. We read what we sow, and and I surely wouldn't want um to spend my life judging people by their bloodline and then have God judge me based on my bloodline. Cause what if? What if my bloodline is not of the Israelites? Does that mean my whole life of 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 after I? Uh, turn my life over to Christ Jesus. Does that mean everything from the point that I made Jesus my Lord and Savior up until the point that I die is in vain? Is that what that means? All simply because um, one of my ancestors was an Egyptian, or one of my ancestors was not an Israelite. Is that what that means? In the book of Malachi, God said. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. This is not a commandment. Um, this is not a commandment. God is not saying, I want you to go and hate Esau. And in fact, the Bible says that He's our Jacob's brother. See, we got all these scriptures about um, don't do this to your brother, don't do that to your brother. God talks about what he did to Esau. He doesn't he doesn't give us the command to go and hate Esau. Now, if God says he loved Jacob and he hated Esau, he loved the Israelites and hated the Edomites, that's God. God can love and hate who he desires to love and hate. But this is clearly not a commandment for us to do the same. God goes and I, I God goes and destroys the whole nation, destroys these people because of because of something that they've done. That is not a commandment for us to go and do the same thing that God chooses to do. We got our own, we have our own free will, but this is this is clearly not a commandment for us to hate Esau. Let's get that straight from the door. Um, God did not issue a command in this scripture. In fact, the word of God says the opposite. Read Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18 through 19. Deuteronomy 10, 18 and 19. And we got this right here. Maybe I should have marked the pages, <clears throat> but I can do it around my Bible for the good. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 18 and 19 read, He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger, in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. When you're talking about strangers, I'm talking about those who are not part of the uh, Israelite community, the Hebrew community, the, the bloodline. And that's why what God is saying. He's saying love. He said, you weren't part of the Egyptians, but you were there. And so people aren't part of you, but they're here, so love them. He doesn't tell us to hate them. That's not what God said. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7 through 8. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 7 through 8 reads, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. Verse 8 says, The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. This is even saying that the Edomites and the Egyptians are even allowed to serve in the congregation with the Israelites. That's what the Word of God is saying right here. Now, I don't know um, if people take the Word of God literally, precept upon precept, from what I've heard. But I, I but um, if this is what God is saying, we can't nitpick the one single little thing that would give us a reason to hate someone, because. If, if if Malachi chapter 1 is the only reason a person would hate another person, 
they're taking the scripture all wrong because that's not a command. God, God hates the things that people do. If um, I ain't, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself, I'm gonna stay right here for a second. Joshua read the commandments to the Israelites, and he read the commandments to the non-Israelites in Joshua, chapter eight, verse thirty-five. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, with the women, the little ones, and the strangers who were living among them. Now, if um, if the commandments are only for the Hebrew Israelites, why is Joshua reading the commandments to those who are not Israelites, to the strangers, to the foreigners, to the outsiders who are living with them? You have to take you have to take into consideration that true enough God knew that there was going to be segregation there was going to be separation there was going to be hate and envy but God left his word so that people can go and read his word with an open heart with an open mind God is love now now God is love the Old Testament just shows um, the things that God did to people when they were trying to be under the law which they were not able to do you cannot be under the law and serve the law 100% there's a new law in place now, the law of the Holy Spirit, who helps us to fulfill all 633 of those laws, statutes, and commandments, which are in the Old Testament. In Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6, God says that Christ will be a light to the Gentiles as well. I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. This is the Lord Almighty talking to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Yeshua, even though his name is not mentioned. It says, indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you, Jesus, as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. I've heard somebody say, well, the Gentiles are just uh, the Israelites who are uh, living in a different uh, spot, or living among somebody else. That does not, they don't make you a Gentile because of the area that you live in. If you're a Gentile, Gentiles were considered those who were not of the Israelite lineage, those who were not uh, under Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those who were not under Jacob, those were considered the, the Gentiles. So it, that's and that's a that's a misunderstanding that some people have as well, and, and and people can be confused or misled or misguided because of, because someone may believe man a Gentile is everybody who uh sinning. That's a, that ain't, that's a lie there. You could you they say you sinning like the Gentiles, but sinning don't make make you become a Gentile. Living in another country does not make you become a Gentile either. God says that Christ will be a light to the Gentiles as well. So, we cannot decide who does the will of God. We can only do our part. Who knows? What if a Chinese man believes in God, the Most High God, Yahweh, Jehovah, El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What if a Chinese man believes in him and helps a black man and a white man have faith in this same God and in Christ Jesus. What if a Chinese man helps a black man and a white man to have faith in Christ Jesus and who is the Son of God? What if those two men, the the, the, the black man and the white man who was taught about, who was shown the way by the Chinese man, what if those two men teach others the gospel of Christ and then the ones who they teach, they teach others the gospel. Huh? We must be careful not to let our hate or discretion get in the way of what God is doing. Um, if someone wants to believe, if I'm, I'm using Chinese man as an example. If he wants to, to tell somebody, hey man, the Lord died for your sins. Who, who are we to say, you can't go tell him that? That ain't your job. That ain't your anything. Man, there's nothing in scripture that say uh, Gentiles or who sinners or anybody else are not allowed 
to tell people who the Lord Jesus Christ is. That's not scriptural. There's nothing in this Holy Bible that says you are not allowed to go and share the word. Because uh, the demons believe in Jesus and they tremble. You know what I'm saying? So if even if whatever that person's whatever that person's purpose is, believe God is using him for or for for a reason, for a season or whatever. But it's not we're out of place to tell somebody you cannot spread the gospel of Christ Jesus because of your skin color, or because of your bloodline, or because of your heritage, or because you're a sinner, or because this is not your God. This is my God only. We are we out of place to say something like that. Um we must be careful not to let our hate or our discretion get in the way of what God is doing. And surely we should not discourage people from spreading the message of the gospel no matter what their skin color, bloodline, or heritage is. Now I know that in the past, white people have used the Holy Bible, the Word of God, to enslave blacks and to keep them under submission. That does not mean that the Word of God is a lie. It's still the unadulterated word of God. I know a guy um, who picked around in the Bible. I mean, he, um, I'm not going to say his name. We, 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 we was cool. We was buddies. He, he believed in Christ Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he was saved. Hopefully he still is. I think I saw him post something on social media. Some, some scriptures, some uh, maybe to see you led by the Spirit of the Lord God. Um, but this guy, he, um, he dug around some scriptures and pulled some stuff out and put them all together and showed them to me and, and told me that they justify him getting high. He said, he showed me these scriptures. And I, I run across them and I was saying, oh, I didn't know where they were. I didn't remember where they were, but since then I have run across them and I said, this is what the guy used. This is, but I, I'm not putting those scriptures together and, and bundling them together because some person who is struggling with getting high or, or, or whatever form of getting high it is, smoking, uh, drinking, drinking, drinking whiskey is still getting high. I mean, if you can be drunk or high, it's still high. It's still, uh, it's still idolatry. I don't want to put that together and give some person who, who doesn't know the truth an excuse or a reason to, to get high, to go to the liquor store and say, hey man, this is, this is cool, this is what the word of God says, so I'm allowed to do that. But he actually put those scriptures together and he made a valid point. If I, if I did not know any better, I would fall for something like that. But I know that that's not of the Lord, you know, no matter what the scriptures look like, you know. Some people say that the scripture suggests that blacks should hate white people. And this is a trick of the enemy to go against what God stands for, which is love. The same way you can put some scripture together and be deceived by it and spread it to somebody else. That's a trick of the enemy as well. You're being deceived. Um, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. I am, Envy not thou oppressor, nor choose any of his ways. That's what that says. I don't have to go to it. it it's, it's, that's all it says. Now here's the thing. We know that uh, there's a trick of the enemy to hate anybody. For a black person to hate a white person. For a white person to hate a black person. And we all know that uh, black people were oppressed, enslaved by white people. But the Bible says don't envy your oppressor. It's, it also says don't choose any of his ways. But I have to let people know that some of the teachings, when what that some of the teachings that I've been hearing my guys speak, you know what I'm saying, and and I've got friends who are Hebrew Israelites, but some of the teachings I've been hearing, I've got family who hear their teachings and they harvest hate in their hearts, and, and they're misled because of the stuff that they're being taught, and they don't get the Bible out and read themselves. They just turn on the, the, the Hebrew Israelite channel and that's what they listen to and they go off of that. But we can't, we got to have a, you have to have a mind of your own. You can't allow anyone, not just a Hebrew Israelite, you can't allow the preacher at your church to, to, to take the Bible and turn it around and make you believe a certain thing. You have to have your own personal relationship with God. You have to read what this word says and you have to do what this word says. But there are new things in place and those new things Nothing has changed about the word. Jesus said, 
not one word of the, not one tittle of the word will disappear. Jesus came to fulfill the Jesus came, he lived the law, he wasn't stealing, he wasn't getting high, he wasn't smoking, he wasn't drinking, he wasn't fornicating. Jesus wasn't doing any of that stuff. But he was also saying, hey man, I'm, I'm Lord over this stuff, the Sabbath and this and that. Don't you be trying to question me about it. Then Jesus had authority when he walked this earth. And, um, and he told us, hey man, this is all about love. You got to get your heart right. You got to get the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit with the capital S. That's how you get to heaven. It's not about trying to obey the 633 commandments, laws, and statutes. That's, 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 that's not the process. Once you have the Holy Spirit, these things are, are going to fall in place. I declare to you, man, it, and it, it was happening overnight. Not everything happened overnight, but the moment I decided to turn my life over to Christ Jesus, that's when the sin just started falling off. People started asking me, why you ain't cussing no more? You been cussing? I said, I don't want to cuss no more. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Why well, I don't get high anymore? Because I don't want to get high anymore. The Holy Spirit don't doesn't reject that stuff out of my body. The Holy Spirit don't want that stuff going on up in here. Not this temple here. Your body is the temple of the Lord. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Lord and those who des destroy the uh, defile the temple will be destroyed? I don't but let me close this out, man. Um let, what we need to do is this we need to Let's get our lives, our hearts, and our minds in line with God's word. Let's get them in line with God's word. And there's nothing that God is in here telling you to do a lot of stuff that people tell you that you're supposed to do. You can't take something and draw an analysis and say, well, this is what God wants me to do because this is what God did. Get your heart, your mind, and your will in line with God's word and treat people the way you want to be treated. That's the main thing, man. Treat people the way you want to be treated. And and not the way that they treat you. you Jesus don't say treat people how they treat you. Man, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Right after the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to go up here to verse, uh, verse 14. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. Christ Jesus says, For if you forgive me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive me and their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. See, now, this is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is right there saying, If you forgive me, and he ain't say your brother, he ain't say your enemy, he ain't say anything. He said, If you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. He said, if you forgive, you will be forgiven. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. If we don't forgive, if we are not forgiven for our sins, we cannot get into the kingdom of heaven. No matter who our ancestors were. No matter what your skin color is. No matter what your bloodline or your heritage is. If you don't forgive people for the sins that they have committed against you, you will not be forgiven by our Heavenly Father. And therefore, you will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. Forget what everybody else told you. Forget what, what somebody told you about. Yo, that person ain't going for this reason. This is what the red letters in the Bible. The red letters in the Bible are the, the, are the words of Christ Jesus as he walked the earth in the flesh. I know there's a lot of controversy about his name, the letter J, and all that stuff there, and his skin color and all that. And so I'm not going to get into that. But I, I will say this right here. I believe that uh, when Christ Jesus walked the earth in the flesh, his skin color was black. Because over there and after, you know, most, uh, I mean, I ain't not getting into that, but, but, but why does that matter? Why does it matter that the truth is Christ Jesus' skin color was, was the color of all the other people who lived in Africa 2,000 years ago? He's still saying, he's a, he, the word says he's still a light for the Israelites and for the Gentiles as well. And the word says, if you don't forgive people, you won't be forgiven, man. And that's all I wanted to share, man. Uh, you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. No matter who your ancestors are, no matter what your bloodline, no matter what your skin color, no matter what your heritage. You will not get into the kingdom. God bless you. I love you. God loves you. God loves you and me too. you people.